Hi, my name is Shivani Shah, and I will be presenting you information about the Real ID Act of 2005. This piece of legislation was passed in 2005. A few of the major provisions of this legislation were to establish national standards for driver's licenses and non-driver identification cards. The main objective of Title II, Section 202, is to lay out in detail what the minimum document requirements and issuance standards are for federal recognition in the United States. To meet the minimum standards for federal use requires that a federal agency not accept a driver's license or ID card issued by a state to any person unless the state is meeting the requirements of Section 202. To meet the requirements for the minimum documentation, a state is to include full legal name, date of birth, gender, their driver's license or ID number, a digital photograph, address of principal res residences, signature, physical features to prevent tampering along with features on each driver's license and ID card issued to a person. To meet the minimum issuance standards, a state should require presentation and verification of certain personal information before issuing a driver's license or ID card. Because unauthorized immigrants are not eligible, special requirements must be met by the state. The state must require evidence of lawful status, and with this, a person may become eligible for a temporary driver's license or ID card. However, the, indiv the individual must be able to provide verification of their documents. To meet the other requirements, the state must adopt 13 key practices when issuing driver's licenses and ID cards. Title I of the Real ID Act is a list of amendments to be made to other federal laws which protect against terrorist entry. Section 103 was written to amend Section 212 of the Immigration and Nationality Act and defines the terrorist, the meaning of engage in terrorist activity, and the terrorist organization. The terrorist is any alien who is engaged in or incites terrorist activity, represents or is a member of a terrorist organization and who supports or endorses terrorist activity. They have the intention to cause death or seriously bodily harm by terrorist activity. Also included are the spouse and child of an alien that fits, to fits the description of a terrorist and any alien who has military training from or on behalf of a terrorist organization. The criteria for asylum eligibility was modified. Judicial review of certain immigration decisions were further limited. Waiver authority to construct barriers along the border was expanded. And aviation screening database was established. Congress passed the Real ID Act as part of the Emergency Supplemental Appropriations Act for Defense, the Global War on Terror and Tsunami Relief in 2005, and President George W. Bush signed it into law on May 11, 2005. The Act provides that beginning three years after its enactment, as of May 2008, driver's licenses and state IDs that do not meet the Act's requirements will not be accepted for any specifically defined official federal purpose. Side note, that date has actually been pushed back. Now it is October of 2020. States have responded to the Department of Homeland Security's implementation plan with an all-out revolt against the Real ID Act. To date, 24 states have enacted anti-Real ID bills or resolutions. 15 states, Maine, Montana, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Washington, Alaska, Arizona, Idaho, Louisiana, Virginia, Minnesota, Oregon, and Missouri will never issue a real ID license because they have enacted binding legislation prohibiting participation in the real ID program.
controversial. Uh, yeah. The act was not passed through a true democratic process. It was slipped through Congress in May 2005 in a must-pass Iraq War Tsunami Relief Supplemental Bill as part of a deal reached between the powerful representative of Wisconsin and the congressional leadership. There was no time for sufficient consideration of the act and its sweeping implications. In the Senate, there was not even a single hearing held on the act. The result is that Real ID lacks the legitimacy that comes from having been studied, debated, considered, and directly voted upon by Americans' elected representatives. The game is not over. It has just moved into the states. Although the act was passed by Congress, Real ID cannot go into effect without a multitude of actions in the states. State legislators must appropriate money and, in most cases, change state laws. State executives must remake or build anew all the administrative machinery required to comply with the act's numerous mandates, and a lot of people at the state level do not like what they see. Broad interest group opposition. Opponents range from privacy and civil liberties organizations like the ACLU to conservative groups to immigration groups. It's a bad act. Most fundamentally, the Real ID Act has sparked opposition because it would not be good for our country. Federalism. It burdens our constitutional rights of the states. States have always been the exclusive regulator of driver licensing. Each state has developed an extensive statutory, statutory and regulatory framework in this area, and each state employs workers to carry out that statutory and regulatory scheme. The 10th Amendment provides that the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states or reserved to the states respectively. The Real ID Act seizes the power reserved for the states by federalizing driver's licensing. Real ID was vigorously opposed by the organizations representing the states and seems to violate the 10th Amendment. The Real ID Act requires states' driver's licensing officials to perform two exclusively federal functions, enforcing immigration laws and creating a federal ID card. Constitutional and statutory schemes governing immigration law makes clear that immigration enforcement is entirely a federal function. Additionally, the Real ID Act turns state driver's licensing licenses into federal identity documents necessary for official purposes like entering a federal facility. According to the Supreme Court's anti-commandering doctrine, if the federal government wants to conduct interior immigration enforcement or create federal identity cards, it must hire and pay federal government employees to do so, rather than forcing states licensing employees to carry out this activity. Liberals acknowledge state resistance and enforcement mechanisms are not in effect yet. Conservatives believe that the requirements are unrealistic and, and unachievable and that the state and administration should work together. Libertarians say that no state needs to implement the Real ID Act's national ID mandates. The Real ID would significantly strain state governments. It would require the states to remake their driver's licenses, restructure many of their computer databases and other systems, create an extensive new document storage system, and considerably expanded their security measures. It would require the states to set up an interstate data sharing network, which would also require complex administrative, technical, and security measures. It includes a devilishly difficult mandate that states verify the issuance validity and completeness of every birth certificate, immigration document, utility bill, and any other document presented at DMVs as part of an application for a real ID card. 
Yes, it leaves the DMs, DMVs with no way to compel utility companies or other document issuers to cooperate with that verification. It would require states to expand their DMV payrolls, initiate or expand employee training in such areas as security, document verification, and immigration law, and initiate or expand security clearance procedures for their workers. This legislation is ineffective. There is a strain to state governments and individuals. Higher fees. Because the act's mandates would cost states billions of dollars that Congress is not paying for, fees on individuals applying for driver's licenses would inevitably rise, perhaps steeply. State taxes might also go up. Worse service. Because of the new document requirements for individuals, the labor-intensive complexities involved in verifying those documents and the need for DMVs to reprocess the bulk of the population that already has driver's licenses, individuals would be most likely to confront slower service, longer lines, and the need for repeat visits to the DMV. This legislation steps on the state government power. The 10th Amendment is being ignored. Federal government was incorrect to enact such legislation. Most definitely has it caused a burden on the states. State legislators and citizens should join with the governors and interest groups who oppose this legislation and force Congress to repeal and possibly rework this legislation that benefits both the federal and state government. Thank you.